A first directed uh, graph or a first network graph is a compelling way to kind of show relationship between nodes and links and how they interact with each other. And what I'm going to show you in this uh, section is how to build a network chart. And um, the network chart that I build is made out of uh, questions that relate to React and questions that relate related to JavaScript. And you can interact with the node and the links. So you can click each one of those questions and you can see um, the selected index. And we can actually also interact with each one of those uh, nodes and link. And you can also see this entire chart in the wild. If you go to my website, elielrom.com slash react question, you can see uh, the network chart and we can interact with each question. And what I done is I also created a flip book that allows you to see the question and the answer. And you can interact with the different questions or you can use the network chart to select a question. Let's create a new project with create react app with the must have template. Um, what I'm gonna do is let's copy the yarn command and then in terminal put the command and let's call our chart force chart and after um, you complete um, installing and um, just open it in your favorite IDE. Once you open it in the IDE, we need to add a couple of libraries that we're going to be using. So let's do yarn add and we need D3 and D3 types. And also we need to add the D3 force and the types for D3 force. So get that installed as well. Next in the app SAS file, let's change the background color from that uh, blue dark um, color. I'm going to change it to white. Then run yarn start just to make sure everything is working correctly. Let's take a look. So we all uh, set up and ready to get started. In terms of the data structure, if you look instead of public data, uh, power network um, I put a JSON file and that JSON file is based on two things we have nodes and we have links the nodes are um, are like the main one are the actual nodes and then the links are the one that linking into the node so if you see the name for example JavaScript TypeScript that's for the node then the link is targeting that node you see we have the source and the target for the link and that's the structure. So I put for you the um, JSON um, that we'll work with. Next, let's create our chart component. If you go to the component folder, I'm going to be using the generate React CLI, the class, um, the D3 class type. And in terminal, we can call the component simple force graph and a good place to start is really to define our types for TypeScript so once the component is created let's create our type inside of simple force graph create a new file and let's call it types.ts for TypeScript and we'll first export our namespace that will be types and then we need a few things we need to create a type for the node and we need to create a type we need a space here we need the type for the link And then we need to type <clears throat> for the data object we're going to be passing, which will be um, consist of the node and the links. And we need um, 
couple more things that we can create them later but um, d3 is going to need a type and so anything else we need we can just add them later okay so for the node we want to match what we have in the JSON which is the name uh, the radius size the fill color um, and the group so what we can do for the node let's just set it up the name would be string and then I'm going to create one for the group that will be a number if we want to group them together and then we need the radius size and the fill color so the radius size that's going to be a number and we need the fill color that's going to be a string because it can be different types um, our ESLink doesn't like that I'm using um, starting with lowercase but types you can do it both you can do it lowercase uppercase so it's up to you but if you need to use lowercase you just need to disable ESLint I like to just disable it once not for the entire document or project because um, in case I want to um, you know because just to make sure that I know what I'm doing then for the link if you look at each one of our links it has source target and value so we need to match that too so we need the source we need the target and we need the value now our data object is going to consist of nodes that's going to be of type of the node we created array of them and it's going to need links which be a link type that we just created just an array of them next we can start working with the data and um, what we can do is we can use recoil data management just like we did before so go into the recoil folder and in the selectors we're going to create a new selector and that selector will pull the um, JSON file so we can call it power chart selectors and that's going to be of type TypeScript and then we want to export we want to give it a name so let's call it get power chart data as a name and that will um, equal to the recoil selector and that needs two things it needs a key and it's common to just use the same name as the function just uppercase to ensure its unique name and then for the get we're going to point it to our function that do the heavy lifting so we can return we can call that function get data from API so this could be hooked up to um, you know a service anything you want and our get method it's just gonna call that to pull the data and I'll just use a promise and instead of a promise we need to put a resolve to return the promise and then we need to set up to actually pull the data we'll use the fetch and we need to point out where the data is so it's data slash go to public data power network json and after we're doing the fetch we need to put it then what do we want to do and what we're going to do is we're going to take the response and process the data right and the first thing we can do we've done all this before I'm just so let me just type it quickly right so if the response status is 200 we know there's a problem if it's not 200 we know that we got the correct um, response so if it's not 200 and then we got an error and we should uh, we're just going to use a console log to type something to show 
we're gonna break silently we don't want to have a message I just want to put it in case we have a problem and we can use the response it has a status that we can show what is the problem and if there is no errors then we can return the response JSON then handle the data and the way we're going to handle the data is we can create a constant that will equal the result we have to do that result because if you look at the data type the JSON is set with the result so we need to pick up it has a status of success so we can either pass a success or a fail and then it has a result so we can actually take the results and pass the first element of the array which would be our type so the type we just set we can import it in our um, component simple force graph we can use that so you could see um, what we did before in previous examples what we did is we kind of created the model and made it so it's loosely coupled but this time I'm doing it a little bit different this time what I'm doing is I'm actually um, mapping my object to the type that I set in the chart component and you know there's cons and pros to each approach um, the pro for this approach is that um, now I'm really dealing with one um, data type object instead of creating multiple of them and the you know and the cons is that if I want to extract for example this selector I need to also bring that component so I created the composition between the data module and the chart so I'm just showing you the two approaches and it really depends what you're building Next, let's create a widget that will pull um, the data that uh, out of the recoil selector we created. If you open up the widget README, um, inside of the widget there's the README file, and I'm going to be using this template. It's a um, my widget. It's the type widget, and the type this type of a, a template that I created is just tying in recoil. So that's a great uh, component for us to use and we can call um, the widget network widget that's going to create us the SAS, the component and the test let's take a look okay here we go here is our network widget we have the SAS test file and the component itself and now we can do a little bit cleanup what you can if you look at the template class what it has it has um, a small breakpoint prop that's been passed this is for cases if you want to create a different breakpoint for um, for different component for example if you have if you want your widget to be handled um, for small screen and bigger screen so we can do that but I'm not doing that so I can delete that code and then because of that we don't need the interface the prop interface so I can delete that and I can clean it up in the function component as well and we don't need the grid okay great then you can see recoil is already here for us ready so we can uncomment recoil um, and then what we can do is we can create a data let's call it first data that's going to be of type the type we created in the um, in our chart component so we can import the types from the simple graph we created and then we can set it as data object and then we can uncomment here we have, see we have a lot of the code already written for us then we can use recall value um, and then we need to put the name of our method so if you look at the selector we called it get power chart data 
So we need to match that and import that. And the type is going to be the same type. That would be our data object. Okay. So now that we have our data ready, what we can do is, and we also, we don't need the use effect, so we can clean it up. You see our statement here when we render, ask checking if the data is set. We just need to change it to force data. So if force data is set, then we can um, call our um, component. And if it's not set, then show a loading statement. Um, I just want to show you, actually, let's put back the, um, the use effect because we can actually test this and see that it's all working. So in the use effect, we can actually put a console and check our force data. Oops. So I'm going to put a line breakpoint. Next, I'm going to add a configuration in my IDE so we'll be able to run it in debug mode. So let's call it app localhost 3000 and type we'll use Chrome. Now we can run it in debug mode. We just need to add the, our widget to our app. So let's clean up everything inside the header and we're just going to pull the network widget. Component we created. And now we can run it in debug mode. Okay, here we go. Okay, now if we're looking inside of our variable, we can see the first data. And in the first data, we have the nodes and the link. And inside of each node, we have the object of the node, which include the name, radius, fill color. And inside of the links, we have all the different links that include the source, target, and value. And now we have the data in our widget that we can um, use in our chart or any other component that we're creating.